Hi, my name is John Michael Koloff, and I'll be doing question three of homework one for probability and stochastic processes. Okay, so question three asks us to prove or to disprove this statement that if this is true, then A and B must be independent. So before we even start, let's just remind ourselves what does it mean for A and B to be independent. For A and B to be independent, it needs to satisfy, satisfy this. So probability of A, B must be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So this is essentially what we have to show. So why don't we start with this equation? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this equation and try by working and massaging the equation a bit to show this. Okay, so conditional probability by definition, I could rewrite this part here as probability of a, B over probability of B. And similarly for the second part here, I can write probability of A naught B naught over probability of B naught. And this equals 1. Okay. So now I can rewrite certain things. So for example, I can rewrite, this is just an aside over here, I can rewrite the probability of B naught as 1 minus probability of b. So I'm going to do that for this denominator over here. I'm going to write probability of b not equals 1 minus probability of b. So we start here, probability of a b over probability of b. That stays the same. Here we have probability of a naught, b naught, but the denominator I'm just going to rewrite it as 1 minus probability of b. It's the same thing. This still equals 1. So now I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 1 minus probability of b. So we get 1 minus probability of b times probability of a b over everything over probability of b plus probability of a naught b naught, uh, which equals 1 minus probability of b because I multiplied both sides. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by probability of b. So we get 1 minus probability of b uh, times probability of ab plus probability of b times this guy, probability of a naught, b naught, and then probability of b times this part. So it's probability of b minus probability of b squared. All right. Now, Using De Morgan's rule, I can rewrite this piece as, so I'm just going to write this piece over here, probability of B times, now using De Morgan's rule, the, the intersection of A naught and B naught can also be written as A plus B, uh, probability, uh, excuse me, probability of A plus B everything naught. Okay, and then the rest of the equation stays the same. And then it's still equal to probability of b minus probability squared of b. Okay. Probability of a plus b naught, using the same thing uh, uh, that I used over here for probability of b naught, can be written as 1 minus probability of a plus b. So I'm going to do that. Probability of b times this piece is just going to become 1 minus probability of a plus b. And I'll write in the rest of the equation. 1 minus probability b equals probability of b minus okay now I can distribute the probability of b in here so let me first write this 1 minus probability of b probability of a b plus probability of b minus probability of b times probability of a plus b. Probability of b minus this. Okay, so I can also rewrite probability of a plus b as, so I'll show you over here, probability of a plus b can also be written as probability of a plus probability of b minus the intersection, probability of a b. Okay, so I'm going to use this and put it over here. So 
Uh, I didn't I didn't distribute this, so I'm going to distribute this first. So probability of a b minus probability of b times probability a b plus here I have probability of b minus probability of b times now remember we're rewriting this as probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a b and this equals probability of b minus probability of b squared okay now I'm going to just distribute this minus probability of b through here so start here probability of a b minus probability of b times probability of a b plus probability of b minus so I'm going to distribute probability of b times probability of a minus probability of b squared and then minus probability of a uh, times minus probability of AB becomes plus probability of B times probability of AB which equals probability of B minus probability squared of B. Okay, so now we can start to see some cancellations. So we have here probability of B and probability of B on both sides. We can cancel this with this minus probability b squared, minus probability b squared. We can get rid of that. Okay? Now here we have minus probability of b times probability of a, b. And here we have plus probability of b times probability of a, b. These can cancel as well. So what are we left with? We're left with probability a, b minus probability of B times probability of A and that equals zero because we canceled everything on this side. So now we can just move this to this side so what are we left with? Probability of AB equals probability of A times probability of B. So therefore if you start with the initial condition up here this initial condition shows that A and B will be independent. So I've just shown that A and B are independent if this condition is true.